So what we're going to talk about today is groundwater. So kind of what I've done this whole semester is start out with kind of the scientific details of things. We've talked about water as a molecule and how it behaves and now we're going to move into human use of water. And as it turns out, groundwater sadly is the present and future of our drinking water for the most part because we're humans and because we do human things we've managed to pollute just about every surface water source on the planet past the point where it's safe to drink there is nowhere in the united states lower 48 nowhere where i would just walk up and drink the water on the surface high mountain lake wouldn't do it high mountain stream wouldn't do it i shouldn't say wouldn't do it i've done it and then i've paid for it i've had giardia it's not fun elk cows they're all over the place crapping little bacteria from that gets in the water and makes it undrinkable for us and then down here we go about our daily lives we spill things on the ground we have garbage ends up getting into water systems i would not go drink the Poudre river i would not urge you to drink the Poudre river so where do we get fresh drinking water we either have to take this water off the surface and treat it which costs money or we drill into the ground and suck out water that we've yet to disturb and pollute and that's what we'll talk about today is groundwater so this is water that's in the earth for the most part it does not flow in vast underground rivers and it's not vast underground oceans and lakes you can find some caves where you can find water that's accumulated in it that's not what we're talking about what we're talking about here is rock just like that rock that's over on the uh, table over there if you put that in the ground water is eventually going to soak into all the cracks and crevices that are down there and what we're going to do as humans is we're going to suck it back out of that rock that's what we're talking about so it's water that resides in fractures and poor space in the earth and if you look at those rocks over there most of them have two three maybe eight to ten percent porosity not very much sandstones can have 20 to 30 they're really porous so we're just talking about water that's able to slowly move through all those cracks in the rock i'll start out the next class with this ted ed thing on where do we get our fresh water so we can just skip that for now so a couple of terms we've seen these terms already we talked about these terms when we discussed the movement of gas and oil and fracking the last couple of days porosity is simply the percentage of openings holes cracks whatever that occur in rocks and soils typically pretty low a couple percent some igneous rocks and shales just a few percent sandstones and limestones can have 10 to 25 percent or even a slight bit more but it's rock that's what we're looking at we're looking at rock and then remember permeability is a little different you can have pores but if the pores aren't connected then water in the pores is not going to be able to move so you have to not only have pores but you have to have connected pores and that's what permeability refers to is the ability of water or a fluid or a gas to move through porous rocks now typically this doesn't happen quickly as you might imagine it takes a while for water to wiggle its way through a rock sometimes it can take thousands of years to move a meter but if you have something like loose sand it can move 100 meters in a day typically 
good rocks will allow water to flow several feet a day. So again, permeability is a function of how interconnected the pores are and sometimes how big the pores are as well. I'll give you an example of this in a second. So here's some examples of impermeable and permeable rocks. With an impermeable rock, you either have no pores, or if you have pores, the pores aren't well connected. In a high permeable rock, obviously the pores would be far more connected. So what I'll have here is just a little table with some common rock types, whether their porosity is relatively low or relatively high, and then whether they're permeable or not. So sandstone, just little grains of sand that have been squished together and slightly cemented into a rock. Sandstones are one of the most porous rocks we have. I guess pumice would technically be the most porous. That thing has about 70 cent percent pores, but pumice is not a common rock type. Of the most common rock type, sandstone probably is. So it has a really high porosity and the pores are connected. So it's really permeable. So this is great rock to look for if you want to find high amounts of groundwater. Igneous rocks and I'm ignoring pumice because that's the lone exception, tend to be really low in pores. Some don't have any pores. Some have a few pores, but they're gas bubbles that aren't connected. So the permeability tends to be low. Now you can make a rock like an igneous rock porous if you break it. So sometimes in areas that have experienced extensive mountain building, the rocks are super broken up and those provide pathways for water to move through. So if I put fractured igneous rock on here, then the porosity would be higher and the permeability would be higher. So sometimes it's just not the rock type alone that determines its water carrying capability, but the history that it's gone through as well. So here is an example of what I was talking about. So over on the far left, this area right here, what's the porosity there? You can see it's all rock material, right? No openings. So if you don't have any pores, it's not gonna be permeable. Now look at this area here in the middle. Do you see some pore spaces? Yeah, there's some openings, and in this case, the openings are depicted by blue, right? But you can see there's not clear pathways from, let's say, this pore to this pore. Water's not going to be able to flow through that solid piece of rock. So the water movement in this area is not going to be good. It's going to be still fairly impermeable. But over here, not only do you have pore spaces, but you have pathways that water could move through, don't you? So this is what we're looking for right here when it comes to finding rocks and soils that transmit good amounts of clean water. So the water's just moving through these little open spaces in the rock and soil. But you can see on the right, it's still mostly rock, isn't it? So not super high porosity, but good permeability. Shale is an odd case. Shales are super boring rocks to look at. I'm a geologist, I'm a rock guy. Shales are, shales are flat ass boring to play with. There's nothing, you look at them, there's nothing cool about them. They're super fine grained, but you could argue that they're the most important rock type that as humans, we could study and understand. We can use them for 
energy deposits. They're the most common rock type we have on the continents. They play a huge role in oil and gas development. And when it comes to groundwater, they're hugely important too. And they're kind of weird because they actually can have sort of a medium to high porosity. Shales, some shales are kind of low, 5% range, but a lot of them are 15 to 20%, right up there with sandstones. But they're still impermeable. The main reason is that the pores aren't connected, but sometimes the pores are connected and the water still doesn't flow. And that's because the pores are so small that water surface tension doesn't let the water move through at all. So shales are a weird bird. So when we talk about water moving through, if we say water moves from the upper right to the lower left in this diagram, or generally the direction that that arrow is going, you can see that water doesn't actually go that direction. It has to move around all those little sand grains, rock fragments. So it takes a really convoluted path. But in general, all the water in this diagram would be moving from upper right to lower left. It's like a maze. So this is what I want you to see in your mind when we talk about water in the subsurface. Do not think about Great Lakes of River, Great Lakes and River.